Okay, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, thanks for your uh, participation today. Um, I'm not too sure this is a good timing or a bad timing, but definitely uh, today is a very auspicious day. It's uh, 11 of August 2018, so okay. Uh, hope everybody make tons of money this year and uh, next coming year, okay? Um, okay, um, for the presentation, um, probably I think uh, timing is slightly off a bit because um, this uh, slide actually we prepared during uh, end June or early of July. Back then, market only about uh, 1660 uh, or the about. So, uh, that time, uh, upside seems uh, uh, much higher compared with right now. Uh, at this level, probably we need to reassess the situation again. Um, but I will actually talk uh, along the way uh, when we actually go through the slide. Um, before I actually talk to um, uh, go into the market outlook, uh, just very briefly to bring you through uh, to the uh, macro backdrop. Um, you actually, uh, I think, uh, on paper you actually read about it. I think uh, all those uh, uncertainty, external front. I think we have uh, uh, our uh, trade tension, trade war, um, and uh, you also heard about. Uh, this uh, unwinding of QE, potential hike uh, of interest rate uh, by Fed. I think consensus still looking for another two more hikes this year. Uh, they actually expect uh, uh, next uh, September you should see another hike uh, of interest rate by uh, Fed. Um, uh, but I think uh, sorry, the things may not uh, uh, as bad as we thought. Um, I think so far, trade war side, um, the impact to Malaysia probably, I think, is still pretty manageable. Uh, let me show you the slide. Okay, if you look at the Malaysia uh, in terms of export to direct export to US, we are probably, I think, uh, uh, near here. Uh, this is Malaysia. I think we are still slightly better off compared with countries like, I think, definitely uh, countries like Vietnam and China uh, because I think direct export uh, to US only accounted for about 10% of our exports. And, uh, but then And uh, direct export uh, from Malaysia to China probably is accounted for about 15%. And uh, if you look at the uh, export component, I think one third of our export mainly coming from the commodity base and uh, that actually mainly for the consumption. So in other words, um, the uh, export component from Malaysia to um, US and uh, to uh, uh, China is more resilient in that sense. So uh, impact um, of a trade war probably to us is uh, not, uh, not, say not, I think, uh, probably is more manageable compared with other country. And unwinding a QE, I think um, this is uh, what market has been talking about. There is a potential high interest rate from the US side. Now, I think the, the concern uh, to the Malaysia interest rate, um, we don't really uh, have a big concern about that. I think uh, inflation will stay manageable because without GSC and your petrol pump price should fix at about uh, 220. So that uh, itself, the inflation should be quite manageable. And uh, all the while, if you look at the central bank uh, monetary policy statement, the uh, emphasis is still on growth rather than uh, inflation. So meaning to say, um, the uh, interest rate uh, from Malaysia side to increase or to hike, uh, chances are actually pretty low. Uh, as far as uh, uh, our in-house uh, forecast is concerned, I think this year we wouldn't see much or the uh, potential uh, high in interest rate. And even I think first half of next year also, we don't uh, see uh, the, uh, the, the urgency uh, to increase interest rate uh, in, I mean, on our end. But of course, I think uh, the only um, uh, concern is definitely the interest rate differential between us and US if uh, US uh, decided to raise interest rate further. Um, in terms of export growth, I think that this is some of the slight concern we have. I think uh, in terms of E and E growth, probably I think we are closer to the uh, um, tail end 
of the up cycle. If you look at the uh, uh, Malaysia M and E and E export uh, cycle, the longest um, positive month or month growth was about 26 months. Shortest was 20 months. We are we are about 22, 23 months right now. So we have another uh, three to four months, two more months to go, uh, and uh, that actually probably. Uh, uh, give us some, uh, um, I mean, raise some concern. I mean, if let's say um, the growth really, I think, uh, start to uh, be slower, I think uh, the impact to our economy growth probably uh, will be, I would say, uh, uh, will be there. And uh, therefore, I think the coming next year, probably the growth uh, will be slightly slower compared with this year. Um, domestic side, uh, without GSC, I think definitely is one of the uh, driving factor for our economy growth. Um, and uh, in terms of budget, I think we don't actually put too much of uh, uh, the uh, uh, expectation there. I think uh, most of the uh, potential benefit probably is not to the uh, lesser company, probably is more towards the, uh, uh, the rugged and especially the B40s. Uh, so really, I don't think there has a much uh, uh, impact to the uh, market. Of course, uh, for for the people for our rugged, definitely, uh, uh, this is a, uh, probably a good budget. Um, as we said, I think the 2019 probably will see a slightly slower growth compared with uh, uh, this year. Um, we have a forecast about five percent uh, forecast uh, GDP growth for 2019. For this year, we are looking at uh, 5.1, uh, 5.4 percent. <laughs> In terms of the equity market, uh, what we actually expect, um, so far I think the earnings still there, uh, especially for the bigger cap, uh, earnings still pretty still resilient. Um, this number, 5.1% forecast uh, for this year five, and 5.4% for next year, uh, that is after the first quarter result, I think the, uh, two months back when uh, uh, we have our uh, result reporting season. And after that, actually, uh, we revised it about close to 1% uh, uh, point, I think, uh, lower compared with previously. Uh, the, 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 if you look at the result back then, I think most of the uh, uh, below expectations uh, uh, result actually came from uh, the mid and small cap. That time, I think on average, we saw about close to 8% uh, downgrade in our earning for mid and small cap. So the, this coming second quarter result uh, in this month, I think it will be pretty crucial. Uh, if let's say uh, the result uh, definitely, I will still see some uh, downgrade, but uh, the magnitude of the downgrade shouldn't actually uh, uh, higher compared with the uh, uh, first quarter. Um, if that's uh, the case, I think the, probably we said the, uh, the words probably is over. Uh, second quarter normally uh, is a quarter actually that most of analysts will take a more drastic cut in uh, earnings. And even I think with... Uh, cut in our uh, um, uh, earning estimate, we still uh, able to justify our target price about uh, 1900 uh, back then. I think that, is, that was an uh, uh, adjustment from uh, 1950 uh, in the uh, second quarter. And uh, even I think back then at 1900, uh, um, a lot of comments that probably the uh, index level or the index target uh, is uh, uh, too high, but I think uh, to us, uh, 1900 is still pr uh, pretty achievable based on the numbers we have. And uh, back then, I think during uh, end June or early July, uh, we actually uh, thought that the market, especially I think CI was also, and uh, we think uh, uh, any weakness uh, back then was a uh, uh, good time to accumulate. And uh, the probability to, uh, for the CI to, uh, to test uh, 1750 to 1008 back then uh, still looks very decent based on our uh, simulation study. And um, the, also for the mid and small cap back then also, we said uh, probably the correction is uh, near the, the tail end. Uh, the only um, caveat we have back then was the, uh, uh, the, the valuation uh, of uh, Malaysian market against the regional, because regional market back then, I think they, they, the correction actually got greater compared with us. So uh, in terms of valuation, probably we are slightly more uh, 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 so-called at the premium compared with the regional, therefore actually limit the foreign inflow. Uh, and actually, that actually reflects in the higher outflow uh, in the past uh, uh, one, one, two months. 
And seasonal study, I think uh, back then we said uh, normally third quarter is the uh, weakest quarter, but we said probably uh, not for this quarter because uh, most of the events actually happened during second quarter. You, you actually, we saw uh, um, uh, Muslim fasting month, you saw the Raya festival, also you saw uh, FIFA World Cup, uh, those mainly in the second quarter. So uh, to us, I think third quarter probably uh, may not be the, the weakest quarter for the year. And uh, actually that... Um, already, I think, reflect in the recent uh, rebound. And uh, this chart actually shows you uh, what actually uh, uh, happened during the, uh, um, the end of uh, June. I think the time index sheet trading about 1660 or there about. And um, once actually the hit or to overcome the 1007, it looks like it's a, a double bottom kind of situation. And we said measurement target should be about 1740 to 50 there about. And uh, actually, that measurement target uh, already uh, uh, met. And uh, this is a simulation study we talked about. Uh, the time even index is much lower, but we still pretty confident uh, uh, probability to trip between 1750 to 2008 uh, is still pretty decent. Um, for the uh, mid and small cap, back then also we said uh, um, the, the correction probably uh, yes, it's definitely in the correction mode, but uh, uh, probably I think the, the correction also quite close to the uh, tail end. Um, the main reason was because of this. If you look at uh, this chart here, uh, the forward PR for the FBM 70 index, you can see the uh, um, the corrections of the uh, that forward PR from uh, second from uh, at the higher end. I mean the plus two standard deviation level all the way actually swing down to the negative two standard deviation level. That actually uh, uh, show very strong corrections, and uh, I think um, the recent uh, market. I think you uh, there is a slight uptick here in the end July already. So that uh, have confirmed uh, the uh, um, the so called the uh, uh, end of uh, correction for the mid and small cap. Uh, the same thing goes to the uh, FBM small cap as well. For the bigger cap CI, no worries, CI euro. Back, even back then, we saw some uh, uh, upticks uh, for the CI. That's why we said uh, for the CI, definitely it's uh, also, and uh, we think uh, uh, the bottom is there. Uh, okay, this chart actually shows um, the valuation premium for the CI against the consensus. Now, um, you can actually see uh, that premium uh, uh, is actually at the higher end. Highest was about 18%. We were at the 17% back then. So that's why we said probably it's limit the foreign uh, inflow. And uh, that actually we, we saw the uh, outflow uh, in from the, the local market. Uh, and uh, this chart actually uh, gives you the, um, the uh, also uh, uh, so called the, uh, the conclusion for the CI. If you look at the, this chart, basically we're just measuring the CI against the consensus target price. And uh, back then, after um, uh, a bad first quarter result, I think most of the analysts already cut their numbers and also target prices, and still uh, consensus target price look, uh, looking CI at about 1925. And uh, at the time, CI traded way below that, about 1660 or so. The discount is much lower, uh, actually it's uh, way below the two standard deviation uh, level. So the time is said this is definitely an oversold uh, situation and a reversion back to the mean uh, should bring the CI uh, closer to 1,000 and slightly even uh, slightly higher. Uh, I think the, the level right now should be about 1810, one uh, which is uh, uh, the recent uh, high we, we see. So uh, in a nutshell, I think uh, for the market, uh, definitely, I think we, we, we were looking for uh, a, uh, a rebound play uh, back then. We say it's over. So um, I think now our target, actually first target, at least I think uh, 1810 or so uh, already, I think, achieved uh, what's, uh, um, uh, what is our view right now. I think uh, well, very, very short term, I think uh, definitely we are seeing uh, potential corrections. Uh, if you look at the chart for those who follow technical, um, you, always, you always saw a, a runaway, a, a continuation and, a, and a, a exhaustion gaps. And uh, if you look at the, all the indicators, they are all uh, in the old world 
uh, technical condition. And uh, I think the last two days also you saw some uh, dodgy uh, reversal uh, uh, signal. So that means to say, I think in the very short run, uh, probably correction is very likely. Uh, 1760 probably is the uh, one of the strongest support. Uh, that is actually at uh, uh, negative one uh, sun deviation level. Basically, is uh, uh, this level I'm referring to. Uh, this level, the negative one sun deviation, that will be about 1760. Uh, and I think that should actually act as a quite of a strong uh, support. And I think uh, probably when the index retests uh, that level, probably it's time to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, re-enter the market again. Uh, but of course, I think um, uh, we are also, I think, uh, have to uh, look at the second quarter result. As I said, I think this quarter result is one of the crucial one. Um, so long, I think the magnitude of downgrade is uh, lesser compared to first quarter, I think uh, it should be all right. Uh, but of course, I think uh, if the numbers are, or the downgrades are much stronger than expected, then probably you will risk to see uh, the consensus to further downgrade the uh, earning and also target price. In terms of sectors, um, back then, I think uh, we, we are one of the stronger uh, promoters for the telco. I think, uh, if, if you recall, I think uh, um, telco, uh, telco stocks have been uh, seeing some uh, major sell down. I think, uh, uh, I think led by TM. I think back then you heard about the uh, TM probably have the obligation to double the speed or to actually cut their price by half, all those negative news. Uh, I think uh, subsequently they came out and made an announcement. I think more clarity uh, uh, already given to the market, and subsequently you saw the, the quick rebound then. Um, that time we said, uh, even with the uh, cut in numbers and also target prices, we still believe that uh, Telco uh, was, I think, uh, one of the better sectors because the valuation uh, looks cheap, uh, historically speaking. And, uh, and that was why we actually, uh, uh, for the longest time, I think uh, we. We, we didn't uh, upgrade the telco to overweight, but uh, we decided to upgrade it to an overweight sector. And uh, it's actually proven quite of a, uh, a good move. La. And uh, other overweight uh, sectors that we normally have is steel power utility. I think in, uh, uh, especially at Tanaga, uh, you look at a valuation only about 13, 14 times PE, compared with, uh, I think the market, market is doing about 16 times PE. There about. So definitely it's one of the cheaper, bigger cap uh, compared with uh, uh, the, the other big cap uh, CI stocks. Um, and <clears throat> and uh, one more major changes uh, we have in our recommendation was, uh, I think, the, the construction. I think back then, we like construction. To, uh, then thereafter, we downgraded it and, uh, because of valuations, and uh, we upgraded it back uh, the, uh, to overweight. And uh, only, I think, we downgraded to after the uh, elections. I think... Uh, with the more mega project boon or who, so we, we, we kind of we have to actually uh, downgrade the sectors. And uh, but I think uh, as of now probably uh, we are becoming more selective uh, because we think that uh, uh, that sector uh, already seen a quite of a strong corrections and uh, probably uh, things uh, may not be as bad as we thought. I think especially the recent L3 uh, uh, announcement uh, that is one of the uh, uh, major catalysts to the entire uh, sectors. Uh, the only contrarian uh, stock uh, or sector call probably is our glove. I think um, the, we like glove uh, a lot. I think for those who are following uh, us, I think uh, you know we are one of the stronger promoters for glove. Only I think last two quarters we, uh, we turned cautious and uh, we downgraded it uh, this quarter. Uh, simply because from the valuation point of view, I think uh, growth is definitely there. I think operation efficiency, we have no issue about it. It's just that uh, more on the valuation because they are all of the growth, I think, uh, are players that are traded at uh, close to plus two standard deviation uh, to their historical uh, PER band. So that's why uh, we thought uh, uh, we, we want to actually go for uh, other stocks that actually uh, give you a better uh, value in the sense. Uh, that's why I think in the third quarter topics, uh, we emphasize a lot on the uh, value. I think uh, be, uh, regardless uh, they are big cap or 
uh, mid cap or even small cap, so long uh, they are heavily bashed down and uh, we think it's a sentiment driven, nothing to do with the fundamentals. And uh, if, they, if they still offer values, I think those are the stocks we, we want to look at. I think names like I think MBank, uh, uh, TG, I think TM for that matter also, and Tanaga, those are the names uh, uh, we actually recommended. Uh, we also recommended like names like the smaller player like UEM, uh, Sunrise, I think even though I think property uh, was, was uh, not a, a sexy sector, but we think that the UMS, uh, there, there is a potential uh, relating catalyst because the Australia projects uh, uh, is uh, uh, close to completion by year and that, that should actually, uh, uh, will actually reflect in their numbers uh, very soon. So that's why I think we, we think that is a catalyst we are looking uh, for and uh, therefore we actually upgraded the, the stock. Uh, same thing go with, go with SLP. I think this is the only uh, stock I think within the plastic packaging sectors uh, that have been consistently delivering uh, their result. I think, uh, 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 and therefore, I think uh, 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 they, they, their valuation also relatively uh, attractive at about uh, 12 times uh, back then. I think uh, uh, even earlier, SLP normally trade at about 18 to 19 times. So to us, I think that is definitely the value we are looking uh, for. Uh, uh, early on also we, we, we also look at uh, some of the uh, team play like uh, zero rated uh, GSC. I think uh, we definitely think that uh, uh, that measure probably uh, good for the PTK items like the uh, auto, um, uh, auto sectors. I think those who have a high inventory probably will benefit the most. That's why I think uh, at the time we look at Tan Chong because they have one of the higher uh, inventory levels and uh, higher gearing. So that uh, the faster they can actually clear the inventory, that should actually serve as the rewriting catalyst. But uh, this uh, uh, team play probably uh, is uh, uh, closer to the tail end because by June, uh, I'm sorry, by September uh, with the start of SSD, probably uh, you should, uh, I think uh, you wouldn't see such a, a strong uh, buying anymore. So this team play is definitely close to the tail end. So uh, not so relevant, but uh, for those who still uh, like auto sector, I think uh, MBM resources probably is uh, one of the better ones because of the valuation. The MBM resources only trade about I think only less than uh, uh, 12 times PE. Uh, compared with the others, uh, auto player definitely is one of the cheaper ones. Um, another uh, so-called the uh, uh, team play uh, to capitalize on the greater consumer sentiment is uh, Parkson, I think this is quite of a bold call. I think uh, uh, the reason we, we look at the Parkson is very simple. It's more on a valuation, more on a value again. Uh, Parkson Malaysia, I think this holding company own about 53% of Parkson holding Hong Kong and uh, that 53% um, stake actually translate into close to 1 billion uh, market, uh, 1 billion ringgit. And uh, Parkson right now only have, uh, the market cap only about 600 million. So to us, uh, that is the value we are looking at, and uh, that actually we we, uh, we we have yet to add in uh, Parkson Retail Asia uh, uh, value inside. So and uh, Parkson Holding uh, also a net cash company. So just from the valuation angle, that's why we we uh, we make uh, Parkson one of the topic. And I think uh, if you look at the China number, I think they have uh, shown quite a good number for the past few quarter. Uh, the only segment that actually uh, dragged them down was, uh, I think, the Malaysia and the regional. So without GSC, probably uh, we should see a better number. So I think that probably is uh, one of the catalysts uh, that we have been uh, uh, waiting for. Um, uh, another uh, two more counter we uh, we talked about was uh, one is the DNO. Um, basically, it's more on the capacity. Uh, uh, expansion play and also I think as a hedge against uh, the export uh, play. If you look at the E&E, &E, as I said, I think the uh, cycle probably close to the tail end. Uh, so we want to look at uh, some uh, sub-segment that's uh, uh, having a longer uh, uh, cycle. Uh, that's why we prefer the automotive segment compared with the smartphone segment. If you look at the automotive segment, definitely their, their life cycle is uh, much uh, uh, longer. And I think if you look at the, among the, all the E&E &E players, for those who are really pure uh, play in automotive, uh, KESM 
industry, and also an DNO. DNO basically uh, doing the, the LED, I think, for the uh, uh, car uh, lights, I think LED lighting. Uh, they used to be uh, only uh, involved in uh, uh, LED uh, production for the home appliances, but uh, they move away from that low end segment to uh, automotive, the higher end. That's why you can see from the numbers, from a net profit margin of about 3% now up to about 6 and uh, we expect it to, uh, to improve further to close to 9% uh, net margin. Uh, with uh, the new product. I think now the BM, the, uh, BMW, I think the X, uh, the X series mainly uh, LED produced by them, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so they are actually targeted to, to get more uh, contract. I think really driving them is the uh, capacity. I think uh, for the next two years, you should see, uh, I mean, they are now building capacity to, to, to cater for the demand. So that uh, is one of the catalysts we are looking at. Um, the final, uh, stocks we, we talked about uh, back then was the AWC. Uh, this is an uh, alternate, uh, uh, alternative uh, uh, play to uh, against the construction. I think um, why AWC was because I think uh, this is uh, basically a facility management company. Uh, uh, people, if for those who want more stability uh, within so-called the, the, the construction or the building uh, um, sectors, probably uh, facility management is a better uh, uh, area to look at. Uh, if you look at the valuation, I think uh, AWC back then only trade about, I think, less than eight times PE. Uh, compared with the UEM agenda, uh, that trade at about 13, 14 times. And uh, uh, GFM also, I think, trade uh, about close to uh, uh, high teens. So in the valuation, they are uh, definitely better compared with uh, its peers. And uh, the, if you look at their clientele, I think uh, the, they have quite an interesting clientele. Um, for the uh, waste management side, I think they have uh, KLA 2 they have uh, Changi Airport. Uh, I think uh, for those who are very familiar with uh, uh, this uh, uh, Sam Dabi project at uh, Putra, Putra Heights, I think was the name, uh, Glaze, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Glaze, I think the, the Bangroves immediate area, uh, the uh, 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 so-called the garbage collection system actually designed by AWC. Basically what they do is uh, um, they, they build something like a, 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 a shaft or a vacuum at the, to, to suck all the rubbish to a central point and then the, to conceal it and then from there they actually, uh, you can ask the garbage truck to actually tra uh, transport it. So basically it's more on the, um, the, the, the how you actually control your your, your waste. And also, I think they're into uh, some uh, rainwater harvesting, uh, grey water, uh, uh, recycling, um, plumbing, and uh, general uh, uh, building maintenance stuff. Lah. I think there's some uh, government uh, uh, contract, I think, for seven years uh, to maintain certain government building. I think Matri is one of them. So uh, it's more uh, steady in the sense. Lah. So uh, basically, at uh, this these are the stocks uh, we mentioned in our third quarter. Of course, I think, uh, as I said, uh, um, depend on the coming result, uh, we may actually review our uh, recommendation again. And uh, to, uh, we are also working on our fourth quarter strategy very soon. Um, but I think one thing for sure, I think, as I said, I think short term wise, uh, we are looking for a correction and uh, a better entry level is definitely uh, 1760 and below. And uh, with that, I conclude my presentation. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for, can you wonderful sharing?